special meeting we're having today, so thank you for, for coming. If you'll please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the provisions of Section 2.68, Point zero three zero of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that if you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Metropolitan Transportation Licensing Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. Mr. Fields circulated to us uh, the minutes from our June 23rd, 2022 me uh, meeting. Have the commissioners had an opportunity to review those minutes? Yeah. Is there a motion regarding approval? Make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Motion passes. We're meeting today. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. also the June 29th. Oh, we had two sets. Thank you. Mr. Fields has also circulated the June 29th, 2022 meeting minutes. Is there a motion regarding approval? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Today's special meeting is to go over a number of issues with entertainment transportation. Um, I've also been advised that Council Member Zach Young is here present, and I would like to invite him to come forward to address the TLC regarding ET legislation. Unfortunately, Councilman Young called me just a few moments ago and is going to be unable to be present. He apologized to the Commission for uh, and uh, looks forward to visiting with you as soon as he can. Thank you. Next item on our agenda, we've been asked to consider whether to rescind or amend um, a prior motion to deny a certificate of public convenience and necessity for party central bus. Mr. Fields. Uh, as you described, there was a, uh, a request to for consideration. They are represented and have, a, uh, have an attorney present. I'm sure he'll want to make a comment to you. Party central? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Prills, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Jason Holloman. I represent Party Central and its owner, Tyrell Johnson. Uh, we're here today to ask for a motion to rescind your previous action uh, to deny his permit. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, I believe at the time of the meeting last time, met all of the requirements. Um, he was unable to be present. He was sick with a respiratory infection, was actually at the doctor. We have a doctor's note, if that would be helpful for the record. Um, was frankly fearful he had COVID and did not attend, uh, did not believe he needed to be present because he had provided all of the paperwork. I watched the video and my understanding was there was a question about uh, whether or not he had experience. He actually uh, has had a business license and been in this business since 2019. Uh, I would say he has done so with insurance, uh, without incident. There has been no insurance claim made against him. There has been no citation issued against him uh, for his, uh, his work in this area. So uh, with those facts brought to you, I would ask that you rescind your previous decision, certainly available to answer any questions. Uh, I know that the, the liquor insurance issue is on the agenda a little bit later. Um, he does hold a million dollar policy presently to comply with that. Um, and he is prepared um, to complete the enclosure. His structure now does have an opening up at the top, um, but it can easily be retrofitted to, to be a full enclosure, certainly before he begins under a, this permanent scheme. Are, are you the one uh, prepared to present um, the is, record of our consideration of the, the, uh, from the prior hearing? Uh, if that's at 615, then yes, that's, that's us. And be happy for you to see what was uh, the basis of your previous determination. Yeah, I, the only question that was stated was whether he had experience, which he does. And Mr. Fields had stated that that was unknown to him. 
Um, frankly, there was some inaudible conversation that followed and then a motion. Um, I don't think there was any other question as to his qualifications. And so the concern that was raised, he does meet that concern. And I would submit to you that's the additional information to give you a basis for a motion to rescind and reconsider. Any questions for uh, Mr. Holloman? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, you ready to? Yeah, if you would play it, please. Now we are down uh, to Party Central, Nashville, AJ's Enterprise. They're seeking one. Got it. It looks like it's been partially enclosed. See it on the school bus. Sure. See it operating right there. <coughs> Does have pictures in our? Um, Mr. Chairman, this is another one of those that I was unable to determine experience based on the application. I looked again and I looked multiple times. I was hoping he would be present, or the, I was hoping the applicant would be present. Uh, no, those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. If I, if I may add, uh, after this particular meeting, I was actually notified um, by someone who watches these videos um, that it is sometimes hard to hear us. And as you can see, we've got new microphones. So um, we're, we are, we're, trying to remedy that issue, so. Well, um, the issue we have before us, um, commissioners, is whether to reconsider and well first rescind or amend the prior motion to deny the certificate of public convenience that was requested for party central bus they were seeking one and uh, in order to do so if that's what we are inclined to do the movement has to be from someone who voted to deny I believe this may have been a unanimous vote, but I, I just wanted to point that out. So the motion needs to be to rescind and reconsider? Amend. Uh, yes, so, so reconsider is usually only permissible under Robert's rules the same day as the action took place, the original motion. So, um, however, rescind and amend may be made at subsequent meetings. So those are why those are the two um, motions that are available to you. As the chair correctly stated, um, one of the people who um, voted in favor of the original motion, and by voting in favor in this case, since it was a motion to deny, that would mean voting to deny, would have to um, decide based on the evidence that was just presented um, to um, make a motion to rescind or amend that prior original motion of denial.
with no guarantee of granting just reconsideration. I mean, I think if the motion was a denial. So if you're going to either rescind it or amend it, it seems like you, you have to decide what you're going to do, whether that's, I mean, if, if, if the ultimate decision is just going to be denial, then don't make the motion, you know? If, if the motion is, if you want to consider rescinding or amending, then make the motion. I think one of the things we need to be uh, thinking about here is at our June meeting, you know, it was a, a marathon session of a meeting. We considered a number of applicants and ultimately we determined that there was a public convenience and necessity for Nashville to have 39 entertainment transportation vehicles and 50 sightseeing vehicles. So kind of in part of our consideration of whether to rescind or amend the prior motion um, or the prior denial, excuse me, of a certificate of public convenience and necessity for party central bus, we need to consider whether or not we're willing to increase that number from 39 to 40 and if there is a need and convenience for that. I agree. If someone were to make the motion, they would have to make that finding as well. I just want to put on the record for everybody in the audience that there, if you were not here, there was a very long and deliberate deliberation individually and not as a whole uh, how we came up with this number. It just was not some random number out of the air. We um, met with each of you individually, considered the number of vehicles that you had, the number of vehicles that were issued prior to you coming to the stand. And, you know, that's how we came up with this number. So the lack thereof of movement among the commissioners is, is part of that, that hesitance that you see because this, you know, this was not uh, a group effort. This was very much an individual effort. So to go back over this in our mind to say, um, you know, did we miss something or, or is there room there is just not a quick decision that I'm going over in my mind. I can't speak for the other commissioners, but uh, that's what I'm deliberating in my head right now is this was very intentional uh, the, the last time we were here. motion to rescind or amend just um, would need to come from either Mr. Rogers, Mr. Carr, or I'm sorry, Williams. Ms. Williams, thank you. I was about to say Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> 
um, or Miss Williams, as you are were the commissioners present at the June meeting. May I ask a question? Uh, so you do have the liquor liability insurance in place already? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Already, we already have it. Have had it. Um, million dollar policy. When did you get that? When did you get that? The renewal was back in February. <clears throat> I'm sorry. The renewal was back in February, with the insurance and the renewal where it started at the start period for this year. I, I, as I saw the basis of denial, it was the idea that he had not had experience. And in fact, frankly, he's had more experience than most of the other operators and, and does have the insurance, already has the vehicle, um, and is primarily enclosed. I, I think our, the, the reason for our question, I'm sure, is, is um, we're hearing that it's been very difficult finding liquor liability insurance for this particular type of vehicle. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that yeah, you, I, you've been able to get I, I was going to say, I would point out that among some of the people that receive permits, he has the advantage of already having obtained the insurance, um, which I think is a distinct benefit to the city and to himself um, that some of the applicants that were approved do not have. Many don't, do not have. Uh, was it difficult to obtain? Uh, yes, more, more than likely the more about money. Um, everybody wants money. The insurance company wants money. Um, so you really got to have the money. It's not cheap at all. What is the premium? The print for a yearly is like close to thirty grand for a year, and you got to have the percent percentage up up front. And to do another, you want three million, I need another ten up front. They want it now. So it ain't something that you can just go to the bank and grab the money. I gotta go work. <laughs> I gotta. Add, I gotta do some savings. Not something's gonna happen. It'd be really easy. And I would say that's money that he's already come out of pocket, which obviously he will not recoup if he's not uh, allowed to continue to operate under this license scheme. Mr. Field, it's my understanding that we've had one company that was approved that has withdrawn. So we are now down to 38. There are 38 that met your, uh, that decided to continue the uh, regulation process. They chose to withdraw their, their activity. Excuse me, did you, is it my understanding that you said your policy was a $3 million policy? No, that's, that's what you're asking for, to add on to. Through. Three million dollar policy liability, one million business liability, and a one well, I got, million. I got the one million then. Uh, one million. I got the one million. Yes. You have the one million liquor liability. Yes. Have we inspected the policy, Mr. Fields? And does it I've, comply? Since he was not approved, I've not seen his policy. We'll be happy to provide it. We have it with me right now. Just for some clarification, your vehicle is a black and white. Uh, converted school bus? No, it's all white. It's all white with black lettering that says Party Central? Yeah. Right. It's fully enclosed right there. This right here is where it's partially enclosed. Oh, okay. Can I, can I just pass this real quick? Yeah, that's what I'm pretty sure it does. Mr. Chairman, would it be appropriate for us to uh, defer this until next Thursday after Mr. Fields has had an opportunity to look at the insurance that they can provide. May I raise just one concern if I can? If, if we were to challenge this, we have 60 days and that would be beyond our 60th day is our only concern about that. That's a legitimate concern. Mr. Holloman, thank you. Oh, he, this is the actual insurance. Uh, we, we'd, be, we'd be happy if we could, I think a solution might be to ask if we could obtain a conditional approval based on that inspection.
Spills was the application. Did it include the liquor liability proof of liquor liability insurance, or just the general and and auto? It, you ha you have the original application in your hands, so it would it would be on that that cover sheet. just shows the commercial liability and the auto liability. Correct. When did you obtain the liquor liability? Uh, it's on the same one. Uh, did you submit that with your application? So you, you added an endorsement for one million liquor? Now this is a quote. I'm not saying okay. you don't have it. I'm just saying it's showing quote at the top of the page. Indication quote. So he's prepared to get it. I mean, I'm not going to speak for you, but this is declaration page, which is stating what you have. This is a, this would appear to be a, an indication quote, meaning they've quoted and prepared to issue it. That's what I mean. Oh, it does show there. I'm sorry, it should have been up on that other line, but it does, it is showing on that page. Coverage that would only be insured under the reason I could get this policy. Liquor liability, so we don't have the policy, the full policy. Mm -hmm. Any gross receipts from here? So is that liquor liability up to annual gross receipts? If you can take your photos, but thank you. Thank you. So, Ms. Williams, what Mr. Holloman has, has proposed we consider is is um, that we at least, if we do, um, if we're concerned about proof of liquor liability insurance that we consider a conditional grant um, subject to proof of actual coverage if we're not satisfied with what we have today. It's worded, it's worded in a way that's sort of vague as to the amount of coverage. Typically, an additional insurance would be uh, in, a, in a bracket higher than that particular spot. I'm not saying it doesn't have it. I'm just saying that's not the normal spot it would have showed, at least from what we've seen on other kinds of insurance. We can certainly have the Metro Director of Insurance take a look at the COI. Would it also be required to name Metro as an additional insured? Generally, yes. I didn't see anybody listed as additional insured on the policy. Not that it's not. But it might need to be corrected then.
need to be made if there's no action taken or um, I'm trying to figure out no, what our next move is. No, a motion does not need to be made if no action is taken. <clears throat> if nobody desires to take any action. Yep. Just for <coughs> clarification, myself, who? Ms. Ms. Williams or Ms. Williams. Mr. Rogers? Mr. Rogers. In the minutes it says 4-0. And so the motion would need to be to rescind and amend our original denial. number. Denial. The original denial. The original denial, which would increase the number to 40. Uh, as I understand it at this point, one person did not pay their fee and chose not to proceed with um, <coughs> the application. So even though you all previously granted 39, um, there are actually 38 companies that have the certificates of public necessity and convenience currently. So yes, you, you, I would specify in your motion that you're rescinding and amending your prior motion. And since this company's grant, our request was pretty simple. They were asking for um, a certificate with one permit for one vehicle, then your motion could include that as well if, it, if you so desire. And we could also do that, would that also need to include any condition? Yes, you can put a condition on that that the insurance be verified as correct by Mr. Fields and Mr. Cobb. And would, would we need to be very specific as to say that from June 29th? I mean, <clears throat> I, th I think it would be from today to know. Oh, from today. Did you get <laughs> I'm going to make a motion, but I'm going to keep it simpler, okay? So, so tell me if that's right. I'm going to move that we reconsider our action from the previous meeting. Can we do that first and then consider the application? So, per, so the motion to reconsider per Robert's rules is generally only allowed to be made the same day as the original motion was okay. made. So when the sun sets on that, that motion's off the table, so to speak. Okay. So, so you can make a motion to um, rescind or amend the prior denial. So, okay. How, how, How's that different than reconsider? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure it's significantly different, different, but that's okay. the vocabulary that Robert's Rules uses. What I want to do is rescind our action and then reconsider it separately. Does that you make could, sense? You could divide it into, into okay, two motions. That's what I want. So basically, if you rescind your denial, then basically they're here before you just now submitting okay. their application effectively. Okay. And then you can make a separate motion to either deny it again or grant them one permit. Okay, that's what I want to do. Right, uh, so fine. I so move that we rescind our, rescind our previous action on this particular applicant. Is that good enough? It is. Okay. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 3-2. So we need another motion, right? Either to deny or approve. Okay. Well, what I've been sitting here trying to decide is what would I have done, you know, last month <laughs> if you had showed up. Uh, and since we're down from 39 to 38, just for purposes of discussion, I'm going to make a motion that we approve this applicant for uh, one, uh, one license. Is that what we call them, a license? It, they would get a certificate for the company and they would get a permit for the vehicle, okay. one permit. So I move that we approve one certificate and uh, one, one, what? Permit. one permit for are this you, particular applicant. Are you making a motion or are you? Yes, I'm making a motion to approve. Okay. Well, in order to lead to discussion, I'm making the motion to approve it. Is that right? Okay. 
Well, if we pass the motion, it's granted. So are you wanting to discuss it or are you making the actual motion? He can choose how he votes. Okay. Well, he, yeah. he keeps, Mr. Rogers, you keep saying discussion. That's why I want to. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm making the motion, and if it gets a second, then we can discuss. Is that I second the motion. Okay. Let's make it simple. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Now we can discuss. We haven't approved it yet, right? No, it's just no you just approved it. Okay. You would have discussion <laughs> after a first and a second under Robert's okay. motion. There was not discussion on it. Yeah. it. <laughs> you, you, you called for a vote before discussion. Yes. Yeah. Robert's rules, first, second, yeah. right. discussion, discussion, vote. So legal, do we need to back up? If you all... You can reconsider that motion now because it is the same day. So if you want you to do that, discussion? you could do that. I'm wondering if I thought it was... We, we would need a specific issue of is this a sightseeing or is it an entertainment? Or if you want to make a, a, a post-vote statement of what your reasoning would have been, then you're also welcome to do that. Well, I made the motion in order to lead the discussion. So how do we get back to that point? Well, you would have to make another motion to reconsider the grant of the, appli of the applicant's permit and certificate. Okay. Go ahead and make your motion to I've been Okay, I, I, boy, I've rescinded a lot today, I apologize. Okay, I move that we rescind, Re reconsider. Re reconsider. reconsider our previous action. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Discussion. No. Discussion happens after a second before the vote under Robert's rules. Right. But. Correct? Yes. Is there any, could you say, is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? There we go. Is there any discussion? <laughs> I'm curious what you want to discuss. Oh, I, I'm nothing particularly. <laughs> I was okay with the vote. I was okay with the vote. <laughs> so uh, I, thought I, was, I was trying to be accommodating. So and the, the move is uh, to, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm clear, the move is to approve or to approve with conditions that we inspect the insurance and the insurance is valid. Not right no, now. That motion passed. Right. But now the motion is... Uh, the motion to reconsider that motion passed also. Mm. So I think now you would have to remake that we motion. Could amend, I could amend the motion to say that the motion would be amended so that it's a conditional approval. You could. Yes, I'd like if to amend. Your second, if your second. I'd like to amend the motion that the approval is contingent upon inspection of uh, the insurance and the insurance meets our standard, names Metro as a um, additional insured. Um, and that that has worked out over the next week and that we um, uh, I guess it would, it would be approved by the department provided the insurance meets. So amend the motion. Move to approve the license for Party Central conditionally provided the insurance meets the TLC's requirements. Can I add something? Please, do you want to um, clarify that as an ETV versus sightseeing? Yes, that's a good so clarification. He's wanting an ETV. As, as a, yes, so that, that um, to extend the commission during the last meeting uh, believe that there were, and I guess said, um, uh, the certificate of need for 39 entertainment transportation vehicles within the county. We have 38. We have one available uh, to go to 39 that we would um, approve Party Central for an ETV conditionally provided the insurance meets the requirements. So that's my amended motion if anybody would like to. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any nays? Motion passes. Thank you, members. Next item, we've been asked to consider whether to rescind or amend our um, denial of a certificate of public convenience and necessity for MD Wright transport. Um, Mr. Fields has indicated to us that MD Wright has withdrawn their request. Next item on the agenda is to consider whether to rescind or amend uh, our prior denial of a um, motion um, let's let me let me restate that because they they received they're wanting more so this is actually a request for us to consider rescinding or amending our prior motion to grant certificates of public convenience and necessity for Nashville party barge My name is Joel Stampley. Um, I'm with the law firm at Belcher Sykes and Harrington. And until um, five minutes ago, I wasn't aware of a finite number of permits to be issued, thus making the uh, our 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 petition moot. Um, and this is also just an effort to exhaust all administrative appeals. If we go before Chancellor Court, I don't want them to go back and say you haven't exhausted all administrative appeals. Thus, this is not ripe for reconsideration. Thus. Uh, if there are no other sightseeing or entertainment vehicle permits to be issued, then I don't really see the need for the motion. So are you withdrawing your motion? Well, I mean, if there are no other permits to be issued, I don't see the need for it. Is that, I mean, that's my understanding. Until today, I wasn't aware of a finite number of permits that were to be issued. Well, we had our meeting in June. Um, and as Mr. Carr explained, we made individual considerations on the individual company applicants. And the number we ended up with was 39. Um, I can't tell you whether or not you should withdraw your request that we consider um, rescinding or amending. You have to make that decision yourself. I mean, I'll let you still consider. I mean, if you could bump up the number of permits issued, I don't foresee that happening, but <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's worth a shot. Um, but I wasn't present in the last June meeting. My client that does not know about this this 39 cap or this 50 cap. Um, so that obviously that changes my motion. I was under the impression that it was an infinite number of, of permits to be issued. So, and I, so, so I guess I would consider my motion and if you could, uh, you know, reconsider and then, and then we'll, we'll, then we'll go from there. Thank you. If the commission takes no action, then no further permits will be granted and the prior decision would remain in effect. I'd like to make a statement again for clarification, <clears throat> just so that there is no vague gray area floating out there. Our deliberation was very deliberate in that if there was wiggle room there, it would have been given at the time of the deadline. Uh, we were whittling down, not opening up. So if it would be unfair in, in, in my consideration that if there were room, it were not given at that time. Seeing that there, I don't think um, that there was anybody who did not take some type of cut in the in the number of permits they were asking for in 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 the terms of how they were determined as ETVs or how they were determined as sightseeing so if it were not clear to all who were present at the time 
the number that we wound up with was the number that we were willing to consider. How many uh, permits does uh, the Nashville Party Barge have? They have four that you've approved. Can I make a motion we move to the next agenda item? I'll make a motion we move to the next agenda item. Is there any second. discussion? No discussion. Uh, we have a second for Mr. Carr. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. I may do that more often. We have, um, we've also been asked to consider whether to rescind or amend our prior motion to deny a certificate of public convenience and necessity for the Nashville party truck. Mr. Fields. And the others, there were uh, letters sent and shared and uh, asked for you to reconsider your action. And they're represented by the attorney and he's ready to describe his, his motion. Uh, good afternoon, Quan Pool, 511 Union Street, um, Suite 2700. I think this case is a little bit different than the others in that uh, the, the testimony received from the board uh, at this particular public hearing was not from a representative of Nashville Party Truck. And so to me, the, the difference in this case is that the board received testimony, evidence, um, from someone that was not affiliated with the company and, and information that was not accurate. And so in the letter that I've uh, submitted to the board, um, I, I sort of explained that in detail. My client, the, the, the member of National Party Truck LLC, was on military orders and was unable to attend. Uh, he's actually still on orders through, the, through August the 28th, and so he's not able to be here today, so I'm here on his behalf. But, but it brings me back to the point that was made to the board, um, excuse me, by the commission, of which was what would the action have been done if he was present that day? If he was present that day and allowed an opportunity to present information to this board that was factual and accurate and, and the board not receive evidence <clears throat> from someone that had no affiliation with his company and provided inaccurate information, what would the board's decision have been? And so to me, that, that is a little bit of a different issue uh, than, than some of the other cases that maybe you would have considered um, back on June 29th. You know, if I could ask, what was the inaccurate information <clears throat> given that you would think we would consider as far as uh, making a change? Well, I think there was a question about whether the vehicles had been deemed unsafe uh, or if the vehicles were unsafe. Uh, and, and this unaffiliated party said that the vehicles were unsafe, but there's been no record of that. Uh, the vehicles have passed their annual compliance inspection. They're due to be, uh, all four vehicles that were requested are due to be recertified. So I, I just don't know where that information came from. It's, it's not a part of our record. We, we have no, this person, my client has been operating for three years, no ordinance violations, uh, no citations, no complaint of, of any sort that any of his vehicles were not fully compliant and, and operational. Um, so, so that was just simply not true. Uh, and so I think based upon that information, and, and you know, obviously if, if you all wanna rewatch the hearing, um, the board denied the application. The, the other question that was asked um, was, was my client present? Was he here? To which this person responded that he was, which again was not true because my, he was in Louisiana on, on orders and there's a 
there's a, a exhibit attached to the letter from his uh, superior officer that explains that he was not in Tennessee at that time, that he was in Louisiana. Mr. Fields, do we have him, any information corroborating the fact that these vehicles are safe and they have passed inspection? I mean, again, we've got the folks the folder. I think based on what <coughs> was shared with us, they're going back for recertification in the middle of September. That's what the letter said. We'll be able to check to see if there's a... Can I ask you a question? Can I, who, who was the person who spoke before us? I mean, I, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I assumed they were representing your client. Uh, yes, it was, the, I, I, I put the name in, in, the, in the letter, uh, it was. Okay. Who she? Oh, okay, I don't remember that specific information. Yes. Could, could we possibly pull that back up just for clarification? I think it's at the six hour mark, 43 seconds, I think. Very good. In terms of reviewing the file, there does not appear to be any mechanical inspections in this file. In our partnership to SolveMet, he modified a vehicle when I was out of town, and the builder of the vehicles and all of my vehicles deemed it unsafe. He raised the bars a foot, maybe two feet in the air, removed the seating, adjusted the walls on a stretch truck vehicle. And when we dissolved our partnership, I gave him that truck. It's the black truck in the pictures. I think he painted it pink. No, he painted the other one pink. It's a wrap, but there's a black one in there also. And that vehicle is deemed unsafe. Oh, I see. Yes. He removed the seating so everybody could stand. And I argued with him. I've been in business a long time and tried to explain things. And that was part, one of the reasons, part of our partnership dissolvement. He's seeking four. And he's, he's currently in operation today? He has been, to my knowledge. Yeah, he, he's under military order. Whether he is today or not, I can't answer that, but he had, at least had been. He is present. He lives two doors down from me. Nashville. I would have to concur with your findings. So in, in until <clears throat> our position is, is but for this information that was this evidence that was placed into the record, the, the board probably would have had a, a full thorough hearing uh, to to consider the application, but certainly understanding that it was a long docket and you hear something it's unsafe it's that's kind of a a decision that's made and you move on to the next case um but had he been able to present uh accurate evidence uh, i think he would have had an opportunity to uh, hopefully been granted the, the the licenses for which he requested do you have any proof before us now that these vehicles are safe 
He, so the most recent inspection was August the 8th. Uh, I have not been able to get that information um, uh, from my client. My understanding is that that uh, inspection uh, was approved. Uh, there are, the other vehicles are slated to, I think the first part of September. Um, but again, he is, is in Louisiana. Uh, the, the ability, he doesn't have a scanner on base. He doesn't have the ability to get me records uh, as, as easily as, as I would like. Uh, so I think it would be better to be able to have him here, uh, but understanding that until August the 28th, he, most of the time he doesn't even have cell service, quite frankly. Um, and he certainly didn't have access to a scanner to be able to get documents to me and, and to the board. No kinkos, no. He, when he's on the base, he's on the base. Uh, he, there's a very limited ability for him to be no able to. No fax machines on the base? Not to my knowledge. Um. Without, for me, without something to, to counterbalance the fact that these vehicles are safe, um, again, um, the evidence that you presented that he was in fact in Louisiana is a very um, hard thing to overlook in consideration, but being given the information from a previous partner that these vehicles were unsafe and you not being able to provide any evidence that they are safe uh, still puts me at the same end. Be so, so our request originally was not to be placed on this docket. I think my understanding is that all of the, all of these items were placed on the same docket. We want it to be placed on the docket to allow him to be here to be able to present that, that evidence. But I think because these were, were all, I guess, similar in nature, they were placed on this August 18th docket. But our request was to allow his orders to end, which was August the 28th, and then allow him to appear before this board uh, in person. Chair, I mean, I mean, I think that this is a difficult situation, but I am, challenged by the fact that this commission made a determination that 39 is where, of ETVs is where we need to be um, and to reconsider this situation, even though it was a difficult one in terms of what happened in that meeting, um, is a challenge because it would mean deciding that public convenience and necessity required more certificates and licenses. And I don't, I'm not there, do, do you know, I mean, I think that or, or we'd have to take them away from somebody else, which we obviously can't do. Um, so I just, I think it's really challenging. Legal, what are our options? Chair's permission, may I ask a factual question? Yes. Do the vehicles have seats? There was um, a statement from Ms. Pizzatola at the public hearing that the vehicles did not have um, seats. And seats are required by the regulations. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, Say your question again. Um, what are our options? Okay, so you could def defer. Um, you could do nothing, in which case the prior decision stands. Um, or you could move to rescind or amend now.
I make a motion that we move to the next agenda item. After discussion, question. Second. Any discussion? Yes. All right. If we move, this is a question for legal. If we move to the next item, does this take his ability away to come back before the board with proof of the vehicle inspection of you know for reconsideration um so is there a deadline that would hinder him again there would have to be some desire on the part of one of the members who voted in favor of the prior motion to deny to make a motion to rescind or amend now, could you make that at a future meeting as well as at today? Sure, um, but you would have to let Mr. Fields know to, in, in enough in advance to place that on an upcoming agenda for a future meeting. I believe it's up for a vote. I move the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? So we have a vote of two and then three abstentions? No, I voted. I didn't hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. Was five zero. Five zero. Yeah. To move on. We've been asked to also consider whether to rescind or amend a prior motion of adopted rules on liquor liability insurance, ET rules, and a deadline for vehicle compliance. So if I may, Mr. Chair, this is a little bit different than the last three you just heard. This isn't a question of um, uh, anyone, you know, disputing the number of permits that they were granted so much. This is a question of a couple of different companies that have um, requested changes to specific rules that this commission adopted on June 23. And I believe those companies, or there may be others as well, um, but I've, the ones I know about are um, Old, Old Town Trolley and Honk <coughs> Tonk Express. Is that right? Correct. Uh, and there, there were other inquiries, uh, not necessarily letters or written communication, but other inquiries regarding several issues. So you could invite representatives of those companies to come present before you. No, um, it was um, Old Town Trolley and Honky Tonk, Tonk, Tonk were the ones that I was contacted about. Were they, I know you got a letter from Old Town. Is there a representative from Old Town Trolley? Good afternoon. Hello. I am Steve Burris with Old Town Trolley Tours and I'm the general manager. I would like, if I could, to defer this uh, discussion to the next meeting. Uh, for next week? Yes. Um, we'd actually like to hear it today. Okay. Did you have questions about my letter and the issues that we had? Any questions, Commissioner? Well, why don't you give us a very short summary of what you're asking for? Um, sure I understand. The, the issue that, that we have with um, a couple of the rules are related to ETV specifically, um, operating hours between 4 and 6 p.m. Uh, as well as being able to operate within a block of schools, daycares, yeah. and churches. And as a seated sightseeing company, 
uh, many of the churches and schools that we pass and discuss are historic markers in Nashville and an important part to sharing the history of our city. Operating hours between four and six, our concern there uh, is that due to the nature of what we do, which is a transportation of hop on hop off with various stops around the city, that uh, in order to not have guests on board our vehicles between the hours of four and six, uh, we would have to stop our operations approximately 1.30 or two. And there is also uh, some, some, a little bit in the rules which talks about being able to expand that uh, from two until seven uh, based on need. And that would, in essence, um, end our company in Nashville. So you, well, yeah. so you want your entire class, which is the seated touring, mm -hmm. to be exempted from the requirement that you can't operate from four to six? I believe that would be a good thing. Yeah. So it's not just your company, but the other companies as well? Correct. Because the um, sightseeing tours also, and I guess this is both for your company and the others, those licenses also allow point-to-point -point transportation. And is there a differentiation between point-to-point? -point? And, you know, what I see with your company primarily is the hop-on, hop-off, where you're consistently driving around traffic all the time yes. versus we're gonna go pick up a group and take them from A to B, correct? That's correct. So I believe the general, definition, the general definition of entertainment transportation vehicles um, does include both point to point and it says whether or not they, they use a fixed route, I believe is the language. Um, and so um, I would say that seated sightseeing vehicles are actually technically a subset of entertainment transportation vehicles, um, but we have acknowledged distinctions for them in other ways because they, they do operate a little bit differently. They know, don't allow alcohol at all. Um, uh, they, what are the other things? I can't remember now. Listen, they, they um, must be seated at all times. And, and they must be seated at all times, correct. And they, um, uh, th so because of their um, uh, additional safety concerns and, and I, th I think I don't, Mr. I, I think the, the applicant was arguing um, because they were quieter, um, they were asking for some different rules. And the other way in which they were treated differently is that they were subjected to a separate um, uh, finding of um, public convenience and necessity um, in terms of that the commission um, awarded 50 of the seated sightseeing type of permit. Um, and I will say, since these are rules, um, in order to take those into, into, into order to decide to change rules, and you don't have to move to do anything, but if you decide to change a rule, you do have to open a public hearing. Mr. Chairman, under item point five zero, it it does not uh, expand the rush hour period. It doesn't provide any additional information. It just says to enhance safety and encourage traffic flow. Vehicles must travel in a manner consistent with the flow of traffic and may not operate during the rush hour period between 4 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. So there's there's not a, a buildup or a, a, a time that expands it to seven. Okay. Part of the concern that I read in the letter, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that to be off the road by four, you would be doing your last pickup at close to two because they just circle all around town. Mm -hmm. And then it takes time for them to go back out from right. from six. And, and from a enhancing traffic flow standpoint, we were looking at public safety. I often see your buses uh, parked all over the place. I'll see it second and Broadway, three or four buses deep 
blocking multiple lanes of traffic when people are trying to go northbound through second. And I think from the commission standpoint, one of the things we were trying to, to work through was how do we help the fire, the fire department vehicles get down second mm -hmm. at rush hour? How do we help people get down second at rush hour when you've got multiple buses that are blocking it? So I think, you know, from watching the video, because I wasn't here, but watching the video at least, I think a lot of the deliberation was around public safety and, mm -hmm. and making sure that we could help move traffic around the core. But does that, does that prohibit, that clause prohibit point to point? So if they're, if they're picking up a group of, and I just wanna make sure I'm clear on this, if they're picking up a, a, a I, I, I've seen a bus of yours uh, pick up people at a church and take them to a, um, uh, a venue for a reception, a wedding reception. Yeah, so if a point to point transfer does not involve any entertainment along the way, if it's purely transportation, then it does not meet the definition of entertainment transportation vehicle. So if the music's on? So it doesn't really matter whether it's point to point or a fixed route. What matters is whether, in addition to just purely transportation being the role of the vehicle, um, there is some additional element of like social or entertainment um, uh, enjoyment being sold to the customers. Right. Narration. Talking about the church or yes. the Ryman or whatever it might be. That, that is entertainment, but moving people from venue to venue to keep the 20 cars off the road because you're moving, you know, 40 people from a church to a wedding reception, for example. It is y'all's decision. <laughs> might, might not be, that might be a point-to-point -point transportation versus the buses that are consistently. Yes, I, I would say you need to, ha to call a public hearing if you're going to change the rule in that way, but I would say that that would be something that you could change it to say. Um, I, I, we didn't, speaking of churches, didn't you also ask to be exempted from the a one block radius rule in terms of the churches and schools and hospitals and whatnot? Yes. Could we ask for language for this to be developed? by staff and legal and presented to us at next week's meeting <clears throat> regarding their um, uh, item under 070. And can y'all give us some guidance on what you would like that to say? Well, perhaps just specifying uh, the separation between ETV and sightseeing vehicles under item A. 070. As well as point to point. Um, I'm not sure I'm clear on that. What you what you all are wanting. The one that says no ETV may conduct normal operations within a one city block, etc. Um, and to separate those two sightseeing vehicles from ETV vehicles so that ETVs are still under this regulation. So, so the seated site, you're, you're asking to develop uh, language that would potentially, if the commission approved it, to separate seated sightseeing from the ETs. In, in terms for, of regarding As to the application a. of Rule 70. Yes. Right. And not as to the application of Rule 50. Uh, under the 4 to 6 p.m., that's a toughie, and I, um, sort of turn to Ms. Alarcon about traffic on that. Well, I'm, I'm going to kind of lead off of um, um, what the commissioner said earlier about the buses stacking and it creating a traffic problem. Um, four to six is our heaviest traffic time, and it's not just in our downtown core, but throughout the city. So that's why mm -hmm. staff had put the recommendation forward about limitations during the four to six hours so that we can make sure that we can appropriately get traffic moving and not stalled, and it does hinder, I mean, a sightseeing vehicle creates as much traffic congestion as any vehicle that's on the road, but specifically because they're a stop and go, stop and go, and pick up and hop off, up on, it has the tendency to slow it down even more. 
is there any way that you can modify that period between four to six or, you know, to compress that or to, uh, so that your, your pickups or your hop on hop off period during that within specific areas of traffic concern might, um, that would be helpful to you, helpful to your customers right. and still accomplish what you need to accomplish. I think we could could do that certainly. Uh, our our biggest concern because our last tour actually leaves the downtown area at 4 p.m. Um, our concern is the folks that start at 2 o'clock and 2:15 and 2:30 are ending their tour and then we're leaving the downtown area, but they end their tour between 4 and 6. So I think as far as starting our tour. <coughs> We are, we are out of the downtown core area within 15 minutes of our tour time. Uh, and we begin moving toward Bicentennial Park and Centennial Park and those areas. Are, are you circling other buses though back into the core to drop off? To drop off, that's Between where they end. Between four and six. So yes. you're, you're coming in with how many buses on a Thursday or a Friday between four and six? It's be between four and six, that would be any tours that started at approximately 2.15. So on a busy day, we're running every 15 minutes. Um, so we could have a 2.15, 2.30. I have to think this through, I'm sorry. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, coming in every 15 minutes to drop off and then leave the area to end their day. 60 buses in an hour. So 120 buses between four and six, roughly? Six, six vehicles within an hour. Six within an hour, not six every 15 minutes dropping. Correct, correct. And the last part of the tour is simply to drop off. There is no other part, sightseeing, information, touring, once you make that loop back, it is just to get them back to their point of origin. That is correct. Without a stop. That is correct. Ms. Alicon, is there going to be a recommendation from your office, a possible recommendation, I know you can't commit to this right now, uh, regarding drop-off locations, pick-up locations, or anything, I, I realize that our rules state that they have to be approved by Metro if they're on public right-of-way or they have to be private. Um, are you going to have any recommendations regarding that during this time period that might address his issue? So as um, I had shared with the commission um, a few meetings back, we actually currently have Connect Downtown study underway. And we are anticipating that recommendations are gonna be forthcoming out of that study. That's going to recommend where to put better, to have better drop off pickup consideration that will allow a better traffic flow. So down the road, once we get those recommendations back, we do feel that there will be some recommend changes um, that will help improve the traffic flow, but um, I think some of the concern is even though the, the vehicles, there's every one every 15 minutes, you typically see three to four buses stack on second. So they'll wait there also for pickups to come. And so it, it's a buildup and it becomes, it becomes a traffic congestion issue of being able to properly move traffic. So that was one of the reasons why we, staff had made the recommendation of the four to six, for all the vehicles and not limit them to just the entertainment or to the sightseeing. We felt it was necessary to, because four to six is our peak time to get traffic moving and in, outside of and around downtown. We have a lot of traffic coming into downtown to begin their nighttime entertainment. We have a lot of the traffic trying to leave downtown in the evening because the buildings are getting out from working um, the full day. So uh, in the future, yes, we'll have some recommendations at this moment. We're not, we're, we're in t uh, currently under the Connect Downtown, collecting a lot of data, a lot of information, 
The, the consultant is um, doing simulations on best traffic movements as a recommendation to bring back before us. And that is also something we'll be bringing back to this board at a later date. Do you know relative to the stop, so I'm just looking at your map right now, uh, do you stop, you know, like stop 13 is at the Gulch, Station Inn, Mukesi Boots, Dining. Where do y'all stop there? There is a, a loading area right in front of uh, what station in, and that is where we pick up and drop off. I will, if I if I can just mention the Second Avenue. You know, we are, we are aware of of how that our day ends with with everybody coming back and and getting back to their vehicles, um, and we are hopefully if uh, <laughs> if the uh, def the NDOT uh, approves that, um, going to be loading and unloading on our property at 201 Broadway based on a, an entrance into the parking lot. Curb cut off of second into the parking lot. All the parking goes away essentially and it becomes a bus holding area and then exit onto Broadway. It wouldn't do away with all the parking, but yes, that, that would be our <clears throat> where we would where we would pick up and drop off. And low and have passengers, potential passengers stand and hang out and queue instead of on the sidewalk? Yes. So are the other stops on your map, are they all in in loading zones that were approved by transportation? Yes. And parking. Yeah. Traffic and parking. Mm -hmm. I make a motion, Chair. Yes. I make a motion. We move to the next agenda item. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We've also been asked to review the rules on um, liquor liability insurance. Um, I believe Honky Tonk had contacted um, Metro asking for a review of the rules on liquor liability. Um, uh, I think Nathan Spears had also brought that up. Um, uh, Scott Sims, yes, was the one on behalf of um, Honky Tonk Party Express who um, raised issues of the number of ETV permits, um, the enclosure requirements, the hours of operation restrictions, liquor liability insurance, and deadlines for compliance with the ET rules and permit allotment. Specifically, I think um, the uh, time period for getting the insurance in place and the time period for um, uh, making the improvements to the vehicles to um, cause them to become fully enclosed or otherwise compliant. And then I think Rowdy Bus may have also had a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were. <laughs> We received an email from uh, Rowdy Bus uh, asking for a 30-day grace period on uh, the enclosure issue. So we had several with enclosure issue, and I, I'm, I was making an assumption that once it's on the agenda and there's comments made, you'll be able to look at that and make a determination because the, based on conversations and, and communication, most of, the, most of the requests are in the same vein. They're having... Uh, supply chain issues or or uh, timing issues and that sort of thing so uh, we we also did receive a uh, letter or an email earlier today and he couldn't be here from uh, mr. Spears uh, who's uh, one of their insurance providers for a lot of our companies uh, he says uh, just in short he said uh, we quoting him we appear to have but one option this does not bode well for the future it's uh, so basically what he's saying is there's one you can get it, but he will, thinks we should explore to see if there's any others that can provide the liquor insurance. 
or the beer insurance? Looks like we need to. Um... And we have, we have also had others that have, have phone calls and conversations. So there'll be several that would like to speak, uh, I'm sure, quickly. And, and if you are going to change any of those previously adopted rules or regulations, you will need to open it for a public hearing. I also am aware of the chair's availability for them in just a little while having to leave. Looks like that um, Party Central bus has indicated that they've received insurance from Prime Insurance Company for that liquor liability insurance. being able to make it available. I know I'm seeing a nod or two from the audience. So it is Prime is the one that has been uh, uh, has been shown, can provide it. So Mr. Fields, do, do we know, do you know um, who writes insurance for like the pedal taverns and some of the other <coughs> vehicles? We, we do know in the office, I don't have that in front of me, but certainly we know who the, uh, the various carriers are for the for our pedal carriage companies. So and from what I understand, uh, the companies are asking for additional time to obtain the liquor liability insurance. The two things they were asking time for was the liquor liability and the enclosures. And the, requ and the request was 30 days? From one particular? From one, it was 30. Mr. Chair, I do think that um, both of those things are sometimes out of the control of um, the particular company. You're relying on others to kind of figure those things out. It would seem reasonable to me. We want to make this work, and we want to make sure that um, we're being as responsible as we can be, that, that a, a, some deference would be appropriate. Would anyone like to make a, a motion? Can I ask a legal question here? If we're voting to defer the rules, are there, there? I just made a clarification with Mr. Fields that I want to clarify to you all as well. So the deadlines of, I believe it was 725 for the insurance and 825 for the um, enclosure were not actually adopted as rules. They were just motions. So you could change those without <coughs> opening a public hearing. Any of the other ones, though, you would have to open a public hearing because they actually are codified rules. And uh, the, the 25th, I believe, there were two companies that did provide the insurance uh, at, on, on the deadline. It was a very different motion than the motion on the payments for the fees, but it was still a motion on the, for the 25th at noon. So specifically for the enclosure and for the enclosure and the insurance, we do not have to open that to a public. Just to extend the deadlines for compliance. If that's your only motion is to extend the deadlines for compliance, you can do that. It's not really a rule change. It's just, you know, a change of your prior motion what we've been doing with all the others. Well, then I would like to make a motion to extend those deadlines by 45 days. Okay, that is a motion to rescind your prior um, motion on July 23, June 23, excuse me, um, to um, uh, add 45 days to the original deadline set at that meeting. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yes. Do I need to repeat that? A second. <laughs> Any further discussion? For, for, I'm confused. Right. So, is there uh, a date of compliance that was required in the last meeting of July 25th for insurance and August 25th for all of these to be enclosed. Those were dates that were set at the June 23 meeting, I think, although Mr. Schleffer may say that I'm wrong about that. 
I think there were the 29. Was it on the 29? My memory says 29. Okay, then I'm an error. I would defer to them. And I'm assuming your motion would be 45 days from today? From today. <clears throat> the one thing I, I do hope to commission, I would like full clarification, is whether you, if you have any extensions, I'm also going to make an assumption that all of the regulations are in effect. And in terms of all the safety issues, the driver issues, the inspection issues, uh, and if you'd like to, you know, and I just need either a date certain that you want that enforced, or if you say we walk out today and it's enforced, because that's, that's, an, that's important from an enforcement standpoint that we know exactly the will of the commission. If I need to make that clear, I thought we made that clear at the June meeting, they were effective immediately. Right. I don't think you, I don't think you have to make a motion. I think it's just the commission's. Well, they're effective. Um, so. On repeated occasions, sent drivers to submit their applications. For whatever reason, I'll let Mr. Field speak on that not accept so before you make everything effective let's at least be willing to accept the driver applications to make it all across the board we've accepted we've just not issued correct yes we've accepted we have not issued and the reason we haven't issued is because we don't have a vehicle approved that they can drive so i, I can't can say something I had a driver go this morning to apply for the driver permit. He was told by someone at the TLC office not to send any other drivers. Um, they do not have permits to give them. Um, they are backed up on background checks. That's what my driver was told. He was able to apply for a, dr a driver permit today. He got a background check for set for next week. But he was told by someone at the office not to have the drivers bombard them because they literally have no permits to give. Clearly, there was a miscommunication. Okay. And I can assure you, we will accept the application. Again, from an app, from a uh, issuance standpoint, that is a little bit different. But an app, but acceptance, we're going to accept that application. So I'm okay. sorry there was a miscommunication on that. Gotcha. It didn't come from me, and, and I can assure you there's a miscommunication. Okay. All right. So let's take this one thing at a time. So right now we've been asked to consider an extension of time by which the companies can obtain liquor liability insurance and also a, an extension of time by which the, there can be uh, vehicle enclosure compliance. Is that correct, Mr. Fields? Yes, that's what I believe you've made. All right, and then there's been a, a motion put on the table for consideration. Uh, I believe there was a second, so it's op open for discussion right now on whether or not we should grant a 45 day extension from today for the companies to obtain the liquor liability insurance and also to uh, have their vehicles enclosed. That was my intention. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Now, um, Mr. Fields has asked for us uh, as a commission to explicitly state uh, when uh, the ET, the, otherwise the remaining ET rules should be effective. Um, we've heard from members of the industry today that um, they're unclear when that effective date is, and so we should. I think, as a commission, state what that effective date should be. I think, just again, to make certain, if the commission, I mean, with 45 days, so what we would do is we would basically enforce, we would anticipate anybody that's operating a vehicle to have the appropriate driver's permits, which means the P endorsements and so forth. There have been a lot of questions about P endorsements, about who can get them and who can't get them. Regardless of who can get them and can't get them, the Metropolitan Council required that, not you, not this commission. So if 
walking out today, we're going to we're going to expect the vehicles that are out there to uh, complete their mechanicals, to uh, be properly numbered by a numbering system that we're providing. We're expecting to have the, the insurance has to be in place. Uh, you have not dealt specifically with. Uh, uh, All the insurance, would, again, was in your motion now, in terms of the liquor insurance, you were going to go 45 days as well as enclosure from today, which will be approximately October the 3rd. Um, and so we would not be enforcing the, the enclosure. We would not be enforcing the liquor liability. We would be enforcing everything else. So if a vehicle is on the street without the appropriate amount of insurance, if they don't have the other the other uh, sections of the rules covered, then mm -hmm. uh, then they would be non. We would deem them non-compliant. And as I explained at the note, June third, twenty third meeting, anybody that fails to do that will be brought back to the commission. That does not mean they won't get a citation on the street, it, uh, or actually be taken off the street under my uh, under my order. Uh, it means they would need to be compliant with everything except two things. And, I, and the reason, I mean, I think you've been clear. I wanted to make sure that everybody is clear on the same issue. We're prepared to inspect. We're prepared to issue driver's permits. Uh, if they're compliant, we're ready to we're ready to do it. It's not about that. I've not had a, I haven't had any requests for a full inspection. I've had several saying they're ready for inspection, or getting ready for inspection, and many are going for mechanicals. So we're we're prepared on on a staffing standpoint. We're prepared to do our part. Do we need a motion to that effect? May I add one thing? Yes. Um, so um, this morning, or this afternoon rather, <coughs> the very first thing that you did was to approve the minutes from June 23 and June 29. It was at those meetings that the rules were adopted. Um, so at the point when the minutes, there's case law that at the point when the minutes are approved, that is the point um, that the motion kind of is, is more formally adopted. And that's the point where, when, for example, the um, applicant's 60 days begins to run for the writ of certiorari, if they choose to so file one. And so I think in some ways today is essentially an effective date. Sir, did you, would, like, would you like to add something? Yes, so I would like to ask for an extension on the P endorsements. I've reached out to Billy about my driver having a He's been on a waiting list for three months to try to get that test, um, and he can't get in touch with anybody. They just keep saying you're on the waiting list. Could you please state your name? Josh Cloud. Who are you with? The Big Drag Bus. Unfortunately, and as, as we've talked, based on my understanding of, of metropolitan ordinances, if the commission has required it, I mean, if the council has required it, we're not in a position to be able to say we were not going to require or offer an extension. It, would t it will take a legislative uh, action by the Metropolitan Council to do that. Not that I don't, I don't, I think there's sympathy, but I don't think this commission has the authority and I'll is defer the back to the, to the, the P code? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, then this commission can't do anything about that. Not, not an extension like the insurance? Most legislation will have a provision at the end of it that says something along the lines of this legislation shall take effect immediately upon adoption, the public necessity requiring it. So generally, that would be your indication of when it goes into effect. Is there any way we can get a number to contact someone besides just getting a runaround? That was all I was asking Billy. I, I mean, I can certainly, sir, I don't, I don't have a direct contact there, but I can certainly do that and share it with all the companies okay. and see if, 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 if there is one. Okay. Thank you. May I make a suggestion? Having DOT drivers on the road with CDLs and F endorsements, the endorsements, all the other endorsements, just as a suggestion, you might want to try some of the training schools that issue CDLs and endorsements to see who they go through. Okay. Thank you. So just as a point of clarification, Teresa, so what, what we are saying is that 
our expectation and our understanding as a commission is that these rules are in effect today. I mean, today you approved those minutes yeah. and, and formally adopted the action that you right. took by motion on the June 23rd and June 29th meeting. So, so today yes, is an effective day. That's what our expectation is, with the exception of those two, two, two items, items you just made that the we have about. Yes. Uh, granted an extension on. And we have, yeah, well, we have not taken a vote on that extension, have we? Are we still discussing? No, no we, we did. did take no, we it. did. I thought you did. Yeah. We, we did take it. it. Okay. The 45 days, but just for the alcohol. Just for the alcohol. alcohol. Thank you. Do we need to make a... Uh, take a vote as to the effective date of the remaining rules or are we just a statement that they're effective today? I think she said uh, approving the minutes effectively yeah. was a vote. All right. Is there any other business, Mr. Fields? No, sir. I have no other business. We will be meeting uh, next Thursday at 1.30 in the same room. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? So move to adjourn. Yes. Uh, I had hoped to be able to speak on a number of topics. I didn't know how this was going to go, so I reduced it to writing for the record. I'd like to hand that up. Mm -hmm. There are, I mean, that sets forth our position in detail. There are a lot of things I'd like to talk about. It may be water under the bridge at this point, but I think there needs to be a deeper discussion on enclosure. Um, and the feasibility of enclosure during the warm months. We're finding that almost impossible um, to figure out. Uh, and then we have supply chain issues to get the stuff that we need. So, you know, we're, we're concerned we can't do it at all, much less within 45 days. I mean, that, that's just not doable. Um, so we're, I guess, forced into another forum. We also have concerns with the hours of operations um, that's a major blow to our business. Meanwhile, um, expenses have been increased dramatically with the insurance requirements, um, which is a double whammy that's hard to sustain uh, financially. So we respectfully submit that some of these issues need to be revisited in depth. Um, I don't want to wear out my welcome, but uh, that's our feeling. Mr. Sims, uh, we met extensively earlier this year uh, on the rules, um, and I, I take what you're asking is that we um, consider rescinding or amending those rules. Um, I, I, uh, this was not really on our agenda today, and, um, Mr. Fields, am I correct in interpreting what uh, Honky Tonk is asking the commission to do? S simply make a wholesale re revision to the rules we passed earlier this year? I, 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 and I, I certainly can't speak for Honky Tonk. I don't intend sure. to. I, I do believe they have, uh, they have some concerns about rules that would have to be considered at a public hearing. And you would have to, we would have to place on the agenda and you'd have to, if you placed on the agenda, that's where the proper the proper form. He could certainly speak, but if, if it's going to happen, it may, if, if you want to do that, then we just probably need to set either a special meeting that's going to be talking about rules again. Or I don't want to do it. I, 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 we we, we I, met for hours. I'm just telling the processor. Are there um, any commissioners who would like to have a discussion about the request from Honky Tonk Express? I would suggest that we have some time to look at it. We might be taking it up at another meeting if anyone's interested. So are you, is that a motion to defer to, uh, consideration to? It, it is. 
May technically close. May I? Yeah. We, well, we well, didn't just, vote. I'm not really. I'm, I'm, I mean, you certainly take right. the action if you'd like to. It's a matter of if a commissioner would like to have something brought up. It's just a matter of advising the office, and we can place it on an agenda rather than you have to take a formal action here. But you, because in other words, if you want to, if you want to make a motion, have a discussion about rules, that would be. Uh, well, we're not deferring. We're we're not suggesting to put this up for a public hearing. We're we're saying we want to defer what. Um, well, I don't want to speak for Ms. Webb's slate, but I, I, I assume that she's saying she wants to defer to even consider Mr. Sims' request for us to even look at it. Right. I was just asking for some time to look at it before I can consider. Yeah, and the only, the only issue with that is our writ of certiorari deadline could run as early as Monday. Yeah. Um, so the, um, the rules, the uh, minutes, as we were saying earlier, just were adopted today, so you have 60 days from today. Okay. Can I count on that? I mean, <laughs> that, <li> <laughs> that is me my opinion advice? as one attorney, so I cannot right. say that. With ap that is my opinion, but right. I will trust right. you to use your own legal judgment to verify that. I understand. I'm sure you can research the same case law I can. Well, I think my comment stands that, uh, you know, we're considering the writ deadline filing Monday. So if we can't be heard on these issues, then, um, then we'll just have to move to another forum. Since I interrupted her, then I'm assuming you'd like to make a motion to on reviewing these at a later date, or you, uh, what would you like for us to do? I think I made a motion to right. defer discussion on this to the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we'll defer discussion of the issues raised by Honky Tonk through Mr. Sims to our next meeting next week. Really quick. Uh, this um, is directed to Mr. Field. I did have a question. I was in his office today, and uh, I was trying to see about the permits, and they said they wasn't ready yet. And so I was just trying to figure out uh, what's the stage. I've been to the DOT, and I was you for need the to request inspection of your vehicle. I'm sorry. You need to. You need to. We need to come and inspect your vehicle. We need to and, and review. So if you're ready for that, we'll yes, sir. That's, 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 yes, yes, sir. That's where I'm at. That's all. Yes, that's all it takes. We so I need to go. Just call the email me or call the officer. We'll set it up. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, one more question. For as the, um, if it's going in effect today, uh, or it's already been in effect, is that because I had, the only reason I'm asking this court because I had a bad experience with the uh, pulling the over. I thought it was a, a undercover police officer and all the people, all my patrons got off the bus. So I was wondering, is it a certain way that you're doing the inspection or just surprise, get on the bus? We're, we will be doing an inspection on an empty bus that we'll, we will either come to your lot or you'll come to our lot. Okay. And we'll inspect. This will not be in the middle of the night. Okay, thank you. That's what I need to know. set up and we're going to inspect it. Uh, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, sir. All right. Um, there was a, a motion to adjourn and we have in a second, but we did not take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.